Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us to talk about uh, life after Chatham. And in particular, we're going to be focusing today in our webinar on uh, additional options outside of that traditional college path, uh, including gap year, military, trades, and, uh, and other options that might be available to students um, as a whole. So this can be a really great uh, topic to talk about and to discuss as um, sometimes that traditional path isn't always the best path for every student. So we want to give you options and let you know what options are available to you. I kind of like to think of it like a menu, right? So you have a menu of options that we can provide to students and we want you to be able to pick what seems like it's going to taste the best to you, right? At that restaurant of, of life, if you will. So we're going to go through here and talk about a couple different options. And please know that uh, these conversations, as with any post uh, CHS plans, are very specific and they're very catered to who you are as an individual. And so talking with your counselor, talking with someone like myself is always going to be the most beneficial, but we can still give you this kind of general information through a webinar. So that kind of nicely segues into the fact that um, I, I want to let you all know about a junior conferences that will start taking place. So every junior will have an opportunity to meet with their school counselor to talk about their specific path, right? Like I just said, it's super important to get some specialized uh, information. So you'll talk about your plans after Chatham, review your progress, have a parent or guardian attend that meeting if possible. Um, as you know, things are virtual these these days, so we're, we'll look to do um, whatever works best for you as a student, as parents and guardians as well at the time. Uh, these will start taking place in February and go until the, about uh, the end of April. We will be sending information in a couple weeks about how to sign up for those conference spots. It will be done through Genesis. But again, this is just a great opportunity to have more uh, specific information catered to you. There is a survey on Naviance called the Game Plan Survey that we'll ask that you complete before this conference. We will send you a reminder about that, and I will also uh, show you where you can find that on Naviance when we're done towards the end of this presentation. Uh, there will, uh, if you are maybe considering college or you're not totally sure, but you have some schools in mind, you can add those list of schools to your to your college to your colleges I'm thinking about list, or you can add some careers you have in mind to your careers I'm thinking about list, which I will show you at the end of this as well in Naviance about how you can explore careers that are available and the opportunities that are available to you. That way your counselor can be prepared to know maybe what your plans are career-wise and help you kind of discuss that. Or maybe if you do have some kind of inklings, maybe you want to explore the college process, but just want to get some more information about all your other options available to you. And then um, if you take test scores, that will be an important uh, opportunity to talk about that as well as it is good to be prepared for any kind of opportunity and any, any kind of choice uh, after your time at Chatham. So one of the first opportunities that are becoming much more popular these days uh, in regards to what students are choosing to do with their time after high school is a gap year. And we hear this term a lot. We hear it in movies and TV shows. Um, you hear it from other friends, perhaps. And I think it's becoming much more popular in particular when we're seeing the effects of the pandemic and individuals trying to kind of slow down and think about what really works best for them. So uh, a gap year is, as it says here on the screen, it's a deliberate period of time typically taken between high school and college if you do t um, plan on going on to college in order to deepen um, different kind of levels of awareness, professional awareness, personal awareness, um, practical awareness. Uh, the most important part about this is it's a deliberate period of time, right? It is a time that is focused on uh, it is a focus time, essentially. It's not just kind of hanging out and playing video games and taking time off, right? It's more of a, a focus time that you're really working on developing yourself and maybe working towards future goals or trying to identify what those goals are. As a 17 or 18 year old, a senior in high school, it can sometimes be hard to commit to what you wanna do for the rest of your life. I'm sure you hear a lot of adults telling you often they're still trying to figure it out too. So sometimes a gap year is a nice way for students to slow down and take a little bit of a break um, for a lack of better words in terms of structure and, and kind of focus on the things that they need to do in terms of maturing. This takes a very specific student and again is a very big important um, you know conversation to have but uh, there are a couple of uh, you know activities you can do that are listed here so some individuals volunteer whether that be through the Peace Corps or um, something you know in the states or uh, in a different country maybe teaching uh, English in a in a different country to students 
or maybe volunteering on a local farm to help uh, the, the farming industry in the United States. There's a bunch of different things you can do. Uh, working is all, uh, also an option, obviously. Some people utilize a gap year in order to help support themselves financially for their future goals. So maybe college is something you wanna be doing or perhaps you want to start your own business or something down those lines, or you wanna put that towards trade school, then working for a year or semester or however long that might be for you um, can be very beneficial to help you with your future goals. Uh, internships and apprenticeships are oftentimes uh, great opportunities to learn more about different opportunities more learn more about excuse me different professional opportunities that might be available to you because oftentimes we don't really know what we want to do until we actually physically are doing it right so um, we're going to use those as great resources as well and some individuals choose to travel uh, at the same time to explore and learn more about themselves so we talked a little bit about some reasons why people might choose to do a gap year. A lot of that has to do with uh, maturity uh, and ind independence, wanting to garner that a little bit more, having some personal growth, life skills and practical experience, uh, having a clear career focus, right? Being able to figure out what they want to focus on. And as I mentioned previously, a relief from academic burnout. We know that uh, high school can be uh, a high intense uh, intensity time for academically uh, and an important part of, of your time of growing up. So sometimes students need to take a, a second to kind of breathe and figure out what they want to be doing in order to better move forward. So it's really an individualized uh, process and what works best for you. As you can see in this graphic, there are just a more in-depth explanation of the different options that are available to those uh, in a gap year program. So experiential education, volunteering, interning, traveling, work exchanges, which can be very, all very interesting. And there are a lot of great resources available, which I'll show you on the next slide uh, or in later in the presentation at the very least. One of the best programs that I've come across recently that seems to be very interesting for students who are kind of conflicted between whether or not they want to maybe take that breather or take a gap year and or still want to maybe pursue college. And that's a program called Virto Education. You can see their logo right here. It's a great resource uh, in, that, in that it's a program where they partner with certain colleges. So for example, the University of Vermont is a very popular school uh, at Chatham that a lot of students utilize. And University of Vermont has a partnership with Virto Education. Essentially what they're saying is if you apply to Virto Education to study a gap year, whether that is within the states, in a different country, traveling and working. Uh, but when you are applying to Virto, you are also applying to the University of Vermont. Therefore, you would get an acceptance letter with the understanding that you are deferring for a full year. So it kind of has this nice benefit of being able to get some college acceptances and get an idea of having something down the line in the future. And it also allows you uh, the option to really consider taking that gap year and maturing and growing um, so that you're more position to be uh, successful in college and take your time to do so. So these are common uh, frequently asked questions that are often you know, asked uh, of individuals who are considering gap years. Uh, the most common I think is often people think it requires you traveling abroad into exotic locations and it certainly does not mean that uh, there's plenty of domestic opportunities, domestic meaning in the in the country. Um, as you can see, some listed there, city year, community core, you can intern with someone locally. Uh, a, gap, a, a gap year student um, may be considering college after their time. It depends. That's something that usually they are able to kind of experience and go through during their gap year opportunities. And basically, uh, some of the, the most for, for mentioned uh, gap year programs out there mentioned that 90% of gap year students have an intention to go to college and end up matriculating uh, within the year after graduating high school. So it still is very possible. Sometimes you hear this uh, you know, myth that students, if once they stop school, they won't go back. That's not necessarily the case. And, and those in gap year programs are not noticing that that's the case at all either. Uh, Colleges also are uh, familiar with gap year programs. They know, they know that that's becoming much more popular. Like I said, that Virto Education Program has that partnership. So they are very much aware of that, uh, that individuals are interested in that. And they're also seeing value in the fact that students are taking time to mature, grow, and really feel 
more confident about what they want to be doing. So they're finding that students are also uh, benefiting from it. And in turn, the colleges are benefiting from having students who are prepared and structured and, and ready to move forward and be successful at their school. So there definitely is a nice partnership to it uh, in order to kind of explain who you are and tell your story even more. Uh, so I do want to point out here on our Chatham uh, College and Career website, we have a great link that you can find. Um, if I click on over here, this is our whole site here, uh, the, the College and Career website. This is not the homepage. These are the additional options section where you can see different options available to students. As you can see, here's a gap year section. And then the, this is that Google Doc that I just opened up here. It has a listing of all uh, plenty of different resources available to you. So there's a whole uh, gap year, choosing gap year programs. There is a, a, a resource to look at all the programs available to you, a matching tool to maybe help you match what might be the right program for you, different fairs, and then great websites for you to check out if you're interested in that. So this is a great resource for individuals that might want to be uh, considering uh, a gap year. Okay, so that's a lot on gap years. The reason for that is they can be really up to your imagination and they're really up to a student. It's almost like a student's creating their own major in college. They're creating their own path and their own major, quote unquote, for that semester or year or however long they're looking to do that. So this, again, is a very individualized conversation that you'll want to have with those important people in your family, but then also um, you know, your counselor uh, and other individuals that can help you with making these decisions and get you on the right path. So another option that students can uh, consider is going to a trade or vocational school or, or being a part of participating in an apprenticeship. So trade schools and vocational schools, they are schools dedicated to providing students with training and skills for specific fields. Uh, they, so again, they're specializing in skills rather than like a broad academic uh, curriculum like you are seeing in college. So sometimes these programs might be a couple months, they might be a year to two years. It does depend on which program and they often lead to certifications in certain program in certain fields. So for example, if you were going um, to become an electrician, they would lead to state certification for that uh, and different opportunities available to you to then be um, employable in the future. And so oftentimes people, students who are interested in the trade and vocational schools or apprenticeships, they are students who identify with, they don't like sitting in class all day. They, they work much better with their hands. They wanna be doing something where they're on their feet constantly. Um, and they have a more practical approach to the way they want to, they, the way they see their jobs um, playing out and the way they see uh, them kind of enjoying their life. So. This can be a great opportunity if you have an interest in any of these fields. And it's also a great opportunity for folks who maybe uh, don't want to go on to college. Maybe education is not something that they want to continue to pursue. They would rather start uh, working right away, have their own business, be their own boss. It can be a wonderful opportunity. As I always say to many students, if um, I need a plumber to come to uh, my house on a Sunday to fix uh, my plumbing, I will pay them a large sum of money to do so, right? Like it's a great program and opportunity to um, give back to a community that you can be a part of and to, like I said, potentially own your own business or work for a wonderful um, company. So in order to do uh, trade school and vocational school, they would have their own separate application that you would apply for. And uh, every school is a little bit different, but there are tons of uh, ways to look for different schools. The one in particular I will point out is in Morris County, we have the Morris County Vocational School District. And that is, uh, there are generally um, current high school students that attend programs there, but you also can be an adult learner and attend uh, a program there as well. So they have varying different programs for you to get certifications or to increase your skills in the trade areas. Uh, and then there's also a Career Tech New Jersey site, so the New Jersey Council of County Vocational Technical Schools. So this is a great resource to also look and find um, listing of, of schools and programs that you might be able to take advantage of and be interested in. Unlike college, the, these programs can be um, often very cost effective. And with an apprenticeship, um, so we'll transition a little bit, they are pretty similar, but with an apprenticeship, oftentimes you are working through a paid job where you're learning skills um, on the job at the same time. So it's kind of paying for your schooling in a sense. Uh, and sometimes that in involves classroom instruction, but you're always working under the guidance of an experienced worker. So maybe a welder or someone um, in cosmetology or something along those lines. 
So like I mentioned before, there are a bunch of resources as I highlighted here, the additional options section, you could see that there is a bunch of resources here and links for different websites, different handouts to help you identify different uh, resources and stuff for the trade schools and apprenticeships to kind of explore that option. I will point out here that a, a very popular area of focus for individuals, these are the most popular areas. So sometimes people think uh, vocational or trade school is limiting in that you know you have to be someone who works uh, in a certain field or uh, maybe only really like laborious uh, opportunities or construction or something along those lines, it could really be very vast. Um, hospitality and tourism, maybe a chef, um, education and training, maybe a paraprofessional, uh, AV tech and film, someone who's, a te uh, who's someone helping um, like a, a video production assistant or something along those lines. It just depends on the program that you're looking for. But we're seeing a lot of growth in the medical professional field. So maybe you're a medical technician or a vet technician. Uh, maybe you're doing something specifically in a lab technician or something along the lines of uh, helping uh, individuals in the hospital. So there's a lot of different ways that you can focus uh, on a certain career field and not necessarily need to go to through a traditional four-year school bachelor degree process, you could get a certification and work your way through that, um, which can be a much more accessible to some individuals as well, and can be a lot more attractive to some individuals, as we understand that going to school and 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 spending money and investing in school is, as it is, as I said, a, a big investment, and sometimes we want to go right in, and get excited and go right into the career that we're interested in. Another opportunity that we talk about often is uh, for individuals to uh, enlist in the in the military. So there are two opportunities for individuals to join the military. One of that is to join as an enlisted member. The other is to join as an officer. I'm going to first talk about joining as an officer. Officers in the uh, in the military are those who generally have a bachelor's degree and have had officer reserve training. So what that basically means is that you're coming in at a higher standard in the military, which also means higher pay, potentially other benefits associated with it, uh, because you have this higher level of education and training uh, as opposed to someone who comes in as an enlisted member. Uh, an officer can, you know, you don't have to just be an officer from the start. You could be an enlisted member and then become an officer later down the line if you would like. But um, joining as an officer, a lot of students that do that, they will go to college and the traditional college path, and they will participate in a program called, called ROTC, the Reserve Officer Training Corps. And so that program will allow individuals to train to be an officer status at the same time while completing their degree. And that um, also covers and, and um, contributes to the, the cost of, of the education as well. So some people think that that can be a really great option for, for them. Uh, some people choose to join as an enlisted member and the qualifications to join as an enlisted member is you need to have a high school degree and you have to be a certain age, generally 18 or older. So as long as you have a high school degree, you are eligible to enlist you'll retrieve, receive job training, specific uh, assignments, uh, and you'll have to sign up for about four years of active, active duty and generally about four years of inactive duty. It does depend on the different opportunities and the different branches that you uh, are interested in, which we'll talk about shortly. You, um, you can continue, like I said, if you start out as an enlisted member and you do want to elevate and go up to an officer status, you could uh, use some benefits for your educational benefits through the military that will help pay for your college degree, which could help you get to that status and also help you with the officer training program as well. So there are definitely different opportunities available to you. This is a big conversation to have and something you want to include all of those important parties in as well. So in regards to the different branches, most of you are likely familiar. There's the Air Force, which is uh, responsible for aerial operations, the Army, which is the largest of all the five branches, and it's the major uh, ground combat missions that the Army handles. The Coast Guard is responsible for the maritime law and also marine environmental protection. The Marine Corps uh, the Marine Corps, excuse me, provides land combat, sea-based, and air ground operations. They kind of are that support structure. They're really helping uh, other branches during certain missions. And they also guard uh, U.S. embassies across the world. 
And then lastly, the Navy is what is the organization or the branch that protects the waterways uh, outside of the Coast Guard jurisdiction. So there were a lot of different options. Within each branch, though, there are different qualifications. There are different ages in which you have to enlist by. There are a lot of different specifications. So it's important to, number one, first narrow down which branch you would want to uh, or a couple branches that you'd be interested in. It's almost like if we were thinking about choosing a major or trying to focus on one job, which job would you want to uh, be focused on? So this is what an important element that you'd want to be doing. And also um, thinking about if you would rather join as an officer with an officer standing or join as an enlisted member. There are individuals uh, at recruiting, um, local recruiting areas. We have some local recruiters, I believe for the Army and perhaps for the Marine Corps. I know there's an office in Morristown and there's plenty across the state of New Jersey that meet with students and help them identify what is the best path for them to help them kind of realize, you know what, I do want to go right from high school or perhaps I want to get some schooling under my belt and go from there. So again, this is such a specialized conversation. So it will be really important to discuss this with your parents and guardians, any other important factors in your process to make sure that everyone's on the same page and that you're moving forward with the best foot forward. But this can be a wonderful opportunity to serve the country uh, and to be a public servant. And we are certainly very uh, grateful for students and individuals that choose to go down this path. Uh, so if you have any questions, of course, about this process, please let me know. There are more specifics and I have plenty of resources that I can show you on our website as well. So something I do want to point out is, is our tool called Naviance. There are a lot of great resources for you um, for, for different trades, military, gap year, um, different options available to you uh, and getting creative with those options, of course. But one thing that can help you with identifying your direction is Naviance. And Naviance is our college and career planning tool. Oftentimes we use this uh, largely for the college process, but there are some really great career tools on there that I wanted to point out and some assessments on there and the resume tool that I wanted to point out in order to help you with your process for planning after Chatham. So the first thing I'm gonna show you, and I will actually log into Naviance from a student view, but before I do that, I wanna show you this overview of these assessments here that are available to all students. They're a wonderful way to get to know who you are, maybe the best way that you learn, find out what interests you have, and they kind of um, allow you to point you in the right direction of maybe what you should be looking into more, or maybe confirming uh, or solidifying the idea that you have an interest in a specific area. So maybe you're like, I kind of think I like health sciences, and you take one of these quizzes, and it tells you that you know you did point to that. That could be a really great opportunity to just confirm to you that this is something you could maybe consider going through. So I'm gonna show you the About Me section and the Career section on Naviance. So I'm gonna open that up here. So when you log into Naviance, this is the home screen that everyone is going to see. You have the tabs up here on the top, Colleges, Careers, About Me, and My Planner. I highly encourage you to go through all of these tabs, but like I said, I'm gonna focus on the About Me and the Career section. So in the About Me section, if I go to the About Me home, I can see uh, the different surveys that come that are available to me. I completed all of those surveys because I wanted to learn about and see if it matched for me. So for example, I took a career cluster finder survey and it gave me my top results. It gave me a couple clusters, which I'll tell you about in a little bit. And it gave me different rankings of those uh, areas. So clusters are essentially like career, um, you know, professional uh, programs and, and linkings to help you kind of categorize specific careers together. So it pointed out to me that I'd be interested in hospitality and tourism and also education and training and human services as my top two, as my top three. So that to me tells me that as someone who's working in education, it looks like my interests are aligning with the professional goals that I currently am working towards and, and, and have. Uh, so these are really great opportunities and assessments to work on. I highly encourage you to put on some good music, walk through them. Okay, let me go back this way, sorry. Walk through them and just see what kind of answers you're able to get. There are more down here, like I said, that I didn't take all of them quite yet. So this is an important area for the assessments that can help point you in the right direction in that sense. Before we talked about a game plan, so if you scroll down to the bottom of the About Me section, you'll see a link here for the game plan. 
This game plan is that form that you'll be filling out prior to your junior conference with your counselor, where you will talk about the different goals that you have. So you can put in different opportunities that you're interested in, let's say military service, and you can put in your different career opportunities and interests, so maybe aerospace technology. And if you have any college interests, if not, you can skip past that and fill in different information that you have. That, that way your counselor can review that ahead of time and you can have a more productive conversation together since they have an idea and can bring some information to the meeting that would be more relevant to you and your interests that you're currently thinking about. The last area in the About Me section I wanna show you is the resume section. If you click here, this is an interactive resume builder, which can be really nice and effective. So as you can see, I've added a couple things here. I was a lifeguard. I currently go to Chatham High School. Here's some volunteer things that I was involved in. And you can add them all on here and you can clearly easily edit and remove different items. You can add different items really quickly. So here's this pink, this pink plus sign. If I want to add a volunteer service, I could put in the volunteer program here, the organization everything about it, right? So it's a nice way to track the things that you are doing because if you are applying to uh, a gap year or, or excuse me, to a gap year program or a trade or vocational school, they're gonna wanna see a little bit about who you are and see your interests. So having a resume is always very, very helpful. And eventually you'll need one for sure when you're applying to jobs, if you don't already have like a part-time job or for your full-time career. So this tool can be really helpful. And I think the best part about it is when you go to print export resume, Oh yeah, I'm not saving that volunteer thing. So if I go to print export resume, I can see that I save different resumes. So if I go to one resume that I saved, it's showing me what it looks like there, which can be, which is really nice. So it shows up as a PDF. I can download it as a Word document as well. Uh, and I can also edit it straight from here too. So let's say I wanted to change the template of it. I could preview that template and I could see, oh, you know what? I like this format better. So it's giving you a, a different format of, of what to kind of look at and see. So it can be a really helpful tool just to kind of keep in mind the activities that you're involved in, things that might help you, you know, if you're looking for an apprenticeship, applying for apprenticeships can be competitive. So having a resume can be very helpful as well. So again, that's the About Me section. And what we're gonna do now is take a look at the career section. So if I go to Careers, Career Home, there are there's a section right here about exploring careers and interests and that's what i want to show you right now first of all i did, i'll mention this road trip nation interview archive these are archives of interviews with um, different people in different professions almost like a career fair but all videos you could easily access uh, access those uh, whenever you have some free time and you want to learn more about specific schools uh, in addition to the explore careers and interests uh, you're going to see that you can explore career clusters and careers. So the first thing I'm going to point to is the explore careers and clusters. As I mentioned before, uh, from that inventory assessment that I took, this is going to identify clusters and pathways. So as I, again, clusters are a way of grouping different careers with common skills or like interests together. So let's say I know I have an interest in hospitality and tourism, since that was my highest score, right? And if I click on this cluster, it's going to give me an overview of what that kind of means. It's gonna give me different employment outlooks, plans of study that I can consider, and it's gonna give me related occupations, which is really helpful, right? Related majors if I want to look into that. So let's say I'm very much interested in, um, you know, working as a uh, lodging manager. I could click on that, um, career here and it's going to give me a more in-depth look at what that career actually does. It has related occupation, majors, other clusters and pathways. I can see the different knowledge and skills that I should kind of are the most, they're saying the ranking, the most important skills to have to be successful in this field. It goes through tasks and activities and it also talks about average wages. It will look at the national average wage and then also the average wage for those in the state of New Jersey since that's where we're located. So this can be a really, really helpful tool to kind of explore all of these different types of careers. You can obviously just type in a career too. So let's say I'm interested in being a veterinarian it's gonna bring up a, a bunch of different career names for me. I'm gonna click on veterinarian and it's the same page here. It's gonna give me this overview of, of things to learn more about that, um, about that career. 
Now I mentioned this earlier, there was the colleges I'm thinking about list, and then there's also the careers I'm thinking about list, which is right here, it has this pink heart right next to it. When I click on this, this gives me a full listing of careers that I'm interested in exploring. So uh, when I type in a specific career, let's say I'm gonna go back to being a vet veterin veterinarian, it's been a long day. <laughs> I'm going to see if I like if I review this a job and I say, you know what, I think I'd be interested in this. I want to explore it more. I can click this heart, this favorite button, and it's going to add it to my colleges or careers I'm thinking about section. So if I click view my favorites, I can see that that was on here. So right now I'm interested in these three um, fields right now, but I can add as many as I'd like. The suggested pathways are also on here as well based on the quiz that I took. And then I can also add, um, I can add them if I would like to. So like, let's say I wanna add therapeutic services on here and favorite it. It's going to add that up as a pathway into my favorite careers and clusters. So again, these were just suggested based on some of my searching that I've done here and based on some of my interests. So that could be helpful too. This is just a nice way to collect a full list of what you're thinking about doing and, and what your interests are and I can help your counselor with advising you in the best way possible as well. So that essentially is a, a pretty quick overview of some Naviance tools that are available to students. Uh, and it can be a really, really helpful resource. I often tell people, I might've already said this, but put on some good music, turn on Spotify, make yourself a cup of tea and just kind of scroll through there and see what uh, tools are on there and see what helps you best. Um, like I said, too, with that website that I showed you earlier, there are plenty of resources on there uh, outside of Naviance uh, and other great websites that you can help with, with realizing what your goals are as well. So kind of where we're at right now, wrapping this up, I know that as juniors, it's probably hard to believe that we're already talking about this information, but it is 2021. And before you know it, you'll likely be graduating from Chatham High School. So we want to just help prepare you for that conversation and give you as much resources as, as possible, because we're excited for you and we want you to be excited about the process as well. So use this time now to think about what you want, self-reflect, discuss with those who are important in your life, parents or guardians, siblings, dogs, <laughs> whoever is um, helpful to you and, and kind of helping you realize things that you wanna be doing in your careers and goals. Utilize Naviance for those career tools, keep it updated. And if you are considering maybe some college uh, uh, pieces as well, you can still use that for college as well. Schedule your junior conference when that becomes available. So they'll start in February and complete that game plan like I showed you. We will send you many reminders through email, so don't worry about forgetting uh, that right now. And um, if you're interested in potentially going down that college route, it would be smart to schedule a standardized test just to have one under your belt. At the very least, standardized tests help with, uh, can sometimes serve as graduation requirements in other areas or help us with assuring that you are on the right path for graduation. So a standardized test is always a good opportunity and option to consider, but we can talk more about that one-on-one -on -one if you need to. And then lastly, uh, due on May 1st, many months away, uh, will be something called the Student Brag Sheet and the Senior Parent Guardian Questionnaire. These are two assignments, again, we will send to you via email and remind you a bunch about, uh, and will be assigned to on Naviance as well. But these are two tasks that one will be filled out by you, the student, and one will be filled out by a parent or guardian to give your counselor some more background on who you are and um, help them in uh, advising you for your future. And in particular, if you are choosing to go maybe down the college route or you want to explore that route, it will help your counselors in writing letters of recommendations. That may also be helpful in applying to a gap year program or applying to a vocation uh, of some kind as well. So those are all important things to kind of keep in mind, but not something you need to drop everything and go do right now, right? Things that we're going to be working on slowly but surely. So as I mentioned, further programming and resources will be shared over the next few weeks. We wanted to give you some time to get settled back into the swing of things after the winter break. And so now with the new year, we're talking about the new plans and options that you have available to you. So we'll start sending that information out. As I mentioned, check out, check out our college and career site. As you can see here, here's our homepage. I kind of created this out of uh, the need of being virtual so often. So this is kind of, I, my classroom is room A110. So this is our virtual A110. So any resources you can essentially find in that room or from me, you can find available on this website as well. So it's definitely chock full of a lot of good resources. Uh, 
there are more webinars. We'll be doing uh, the last one on Friday, which is Navigating Naviance, a user tutorial. So I did show you a little bit about um, some Naviance tools uh, for the career process and about me section, but I'll go be going even more in depth about college search processes through this as well. So it'll be a full fledged Naviance walkthrough. But of course, if you have any questions, if you don't hesitate to reach out and um, feel free to reach out to your counselor as well. And like I said, we're excited to get started and help you out and um, Thank you again for attending. I uh, like I said, this is going to be recorded. So I'm going to be able to um, I'm going to be able to share this out with individuals at a later date in case you need to rewatch. But like I said, thank you again for attending and uh, everyone have a great rest of your day. Bye.